Good everyone. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience on this beautiful Thursday. We're going to dive right in. Uh, I arrived this morning at Namaste Village um, with no parable, no idea, of course, uh, which direction we would go. And, and, and I felt, well, there was a combination of feeling really okay about that. And then, you know, there's always a little bit of nervousness. But it's in that nervousness and embracing that nervousness in every area of our life that a real transformation can happen. It's like throwing fertilizer on to soil. The seed gets more of what it needs if we can relax into that and know that everything that I could ever possibly need is right here, right now. Or like today's lesson from A Course in Miracles says, I am one self, united with my creator. This is how God sees you. This is how God knows you, that you are one self. And within that oneness, if I just allow, allow that movement of grace to take hold, everything I could possibly need is given to me easily, automatically, without effort. So what happened was while I was feeling just okay with not necessarily feeling okay um standing over here in the uh the food line i think it was scott said something um about that you know feeling okay about not feeling okay and and what does that mean and and what can that offer us if we're just real and authentic can that move us in, you know far beyond okay into that bliss that overwhelms this entire world. So I immediately went to my room and wrote this. Here we go. Mother, I have a question for you, the male disciple said, smiling. I realized something today that's both liberating and confusing. I'm starting to feel okay about not feeling okay. <laughs> And the more okay I become with this, the more okay I feel. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is how I feel. <clears throat> Does that make any sense to your open mind, mother? Everyone in the ashram began to laugh because they knew that this particular disciple had a sense of humor that was both unpredictable and profound. His name was Scott, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And they could see that mother appreciated the strange question. Let me get this right, she said. You realize that in your egoic state, you're not feeling okay. And the more you accept this, the more you feel yourself lifting above your ego state or the more okay you actually feel. Is that close to what you're trying to say, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that, but I thought I'd add it. Mother, as always, you've understood perfectly. <clears throat> Do you have any parables that help might help me understand even better? Mother thought about that and said, yes, I think I do. There once lived a man who had everything he could ever desire, and yet something deep within his heart felt unsettled and wanting. But what did he want? He couldn't say, and so he went to a great teacher who lived in the forest and asked, I have everything I could ever need or want, and yet I still feel a great need at the core of my being that is never satisfied. Is there any advice you can give me? Yes, I do have something to share about this, the wise master said. <laughs> Have you thought about making friends with your need? The rich man was confused and asked how he might accomplish this. So the master continued saying, making friends with your need means embracing it as a part of who you are, rather than resisting or trying to suppress it. Invite your need into your life as you would welcome a dear friend into your home. Sit with it. Listen to it and understand what it's trying to tell you. 
The rich man pondered the master's words deeply, realizing that he had spent his entire life chasing after external possessions and pleasures in an attempt to fill the void within. Yet, despite his wealth and abundance, the emptiness remained. Taking the master's advice to heart, the rich man began to explore his inner longing with curiosity and compassion. Instead of seeking fulfillment in material possessions, he turned his attention inward, seeking to understand the root of his need, the root of his need, and how he might find divine contentment. As he embarked on this journey of self-discovery, the rich man found that his need was not something to be feared or rejected, but rather a valuable teacher, giving guiding him towards a deeper understanding of himself. With each passing day, he grew more attuned to the whispers of his heart, learning to trust in the wisdom of his innermost desires. In time, the rich man discovered that the true fulfillment could not be found in external riches or worldly successes, but in the simple joy of being true to oneself and living in alignment with one's deepest values and aspirations. By making friends with his need, he found the key to unlocking the door to lasting happiness and inner peace. Does this story help you feel okay about not feeling okay? Mother asked the disciple. The more I surrender to your teaching, the more I realize that feeling okay was never my real goal, the disciple said to her. My only goal is to dissolve into the eternal embrace of love. And you, dear mother, have brought me closer to that experience than I ever thought possible. So thank you for that inspiration this morning. Oh, no. <laughs> Making friends with our need, feeling okay about not feeling okay. You, do you see that even the the expectation or the the need to to have an experience like we're sharing right now, always at its peak? Yeah. To think that always having that at its peak is the goal, and it's not. Because especially in in this life that we lead in, in these lessons that we learn, there will always be that experience of, of higher, lower, inner, out, but to be perfectly, naturally okay with all of it lifts us above. Not in a, not lifting us above in a way that we, we have made it better than, but that we've perfectly accepted who we are, where we are, what is happening, what this fly is doing, always needing to buzz around my head, whatever it may be. To be perfectly okay with whatever is. Do you remember yesterday I, I read that little section from Joel Goldsmith? Let me go back to it again or maybe read a little bit further. Because Joel is just so good at, at bringing it into its most simple component, into the into the what is, okay? He's talking about prayer here. He says, to pray is to become aware of the harmony without mental effort on your part. To become aware of the harmony that's all around us without making any effort to do so. Just to be aware of it. Prayer is the absence of desire in the recognition of is. Once again, the absence of desire in the recognition of is. Spiritual wisdom reveals the deep, clear, cool well of contentment within you through your recognition of is. This is what is. To be perfectly content with what is. Not to think it should be better, it should be different, I should be higher, I should feel a certain way all the time, because that's not 
how it works. The key is that no matter how you feel, high, low, good, bad, none, to be perfectly accepting of what is. Because then you can be perfectly accepting of what is in every situation, with every person, with what's happening in the world, whatever it may be, to be perfectly at peace. In fact, that's how Joel ends this, by saying, be at peace, God is. How simple. So let's turn to Vicki and hear what Vicki has to say about this. Good morning, Vicki. Good morning, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, well, I think what you've been sharing is what you started with in the music, in the meditation. It's all about unconditional love. Unconditional love is so simple. It's just not expecting anything, not a high, not a low. It's not expecting anything, but being just giving. It's love just gives. And when we give to the present moment, whatever, however ordinary it is, how whatever it is, a rainy day, a cloudy day, a sunny day, when we receive, when we accept, acceptance is just another name for unconditional love. When we accept what is, we can receive what really is. When we accept the appearances and stop trying to adjust them, and we have to start with ourselves, our needs, our hurts, our wants, our sicknesses, our imbalances, or whatever they are. If we let them be, we can hear what's underneath our own call for help, a call for help to give of ourselves, our attention to ourselves. Acceptance is just a way of loving. Acceptance is what love is because we open to the presence that's behind all appearances. Everything is full of life. Everything. All the birds in the garden, all the trees, all the all the bodies, the beings, beingness, presence is what we are. And when we stop trying to regulate it and fix it and change it and let it be, especially ourselves, let ourselves be, then all of what's underneath all of that, the sweet preciousness starts coming into our awareness. And that's not something we can read about or teach except by our example. And that's what we do with each other. We help each other accept ourselves, accept whatever is. And in the acceptance of it, we are receptive to the presence that's really there. <clears throat> it's quite, it's really so simple, but it is all unconditional love. Conditions on anything to adjust it or change it is what the thinking mind always wants to do. And we're stepping away from that. It's That's all that's happening. We're stepping away from our thinking mind and finally opening to our souls, our souls beingness, which isn't so much of thinking, but it's of being and enjoying and opening to, being receptive to, looking with wonder at everything. Um, I want, I'll do a short commercial. Yesterday was movie night with my grandchildren. So there's a new Disney movie out. <laughs> you know, I love to add this in when I can. So besides The Chosen, I found a new, a new form of expressing light. It's called Wish. That's the name of the movie. And it's a Disney movie. And like everything, it's storytelling. But the story isn't about some big romance. The story is about inclusivity and finding that we are the light. So the, it's a story of a town, a village, long, long ago, once upon a time, where a, a magician who studied all the magic there was, so that he could be a good magician. He wanted to be a good magician and grant people's wishes. And he formed a town and welcomed, bring me your tired, your poor, your worried, your everything, your huddled masses to his new, his new country. It was a little country. 
and you'll live happily ever after. And it was called Roses, Roses, Roses. In any case, of course, he, in the end, he also wanted the control of what people's wishes were, not just to grant them, but to grant ones that wouldn't threaten his control of everything. <laughs> anyway, one little girl wants to love everybody, wants to give everybody their wishes. And she goes to this king and he, she says, please, I want to work for you. I want to help make everybody's wishes come true. So he brings her into the room and shows her where all the wishes are that everybody gave him. They gave up their power. They gave over their wishes to him, the magician, thinking he'll make their wish come true. They didn't, they lost believing in themselves. And so the little girl looked around and she saw, well, these wishes aren't being very fulfilled. He says, oh no, we can't fulfill a lot of these wishes because that'll change and disrupt the order we have here, meaning his power. So the little girl, the young woman, she's not so little, runs away or leaves and says, thank you very much. And she wishes upon a star. And her wish is, I want everybody, everybody to have their wish. I want happiness, freedom. And what she says is there must be more than just this. There must be a better way is what she's saying. I want to help bring that. She had no interest for herself. Her only wish was to be helpful. What is it? Her wish was to love, unconditionally love. Well, doesn't the stars break open and cascade all over the place? The magician is shaken in his tower. And all of a sudden, the whole story is about how the stars are what we are. It's light in everything, everything, every little leaf, everything. And I thought, oh, this is wonderful. The children are watching this. And that the magician, of course, is now um, put out of business because he can't, he, he wanted to keep control. And what they find is when everyone takes back their wishes and they live from the light inside of them, the star that they are, the light that they are, everything flourishes, everyone lives, everyone survives. And the lesson is we are all that light. We are all love. And in everyone's wishes, wishes to help one another, wishes to love. They're all, all our true wishes. When we come down to it, our wishes and their a will to love. And to love means whether you're handicapped or you're, a, you're an Olympic runner, we are what we are in this condition now. Accepting us brings us to the wonder of the light that we are, not the physical conditions we look around and see. So I wanted to mention that. And what else? <laughs> what did this bring up for me? Oh, it's really about being so comfortable with being ordinary. When there's nowhere to go and nothing to get, it's like, what is it, you know, uh, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. <laughs> After enlightenment, <laughs> chop wood, carry water. It's in the ordinariness of being with one another in comfort, being comfortable with each other. So James, thank you for being willing to be okay with not okay, being willing just to be and to show up here with your family as a brother and let it be okay that we just are with one another. We are with one another with the, with the will that our prayer starts off with every day with our heart, our soul, our mind open to our beingness, to the light that we are. We join in that. And all of the little things that we do, the books we read, the, the passages, the parables, the music, they're all just pointers that help us recognize that we're pointing to the light that is within, not to the conditions that are without. without. So thank you, Brother James. And Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Thank you. Thank you for the love that we bring together, the purpose that we share together every day, and for the love that accepts all of us just as we are. You know, what's and all, <laughs> on tune, off tune. Oh, I have another short story of love expressing. This is short. <laughs> so last night at 10 at night, I get a phone call, and I, I go to sleep early, so I was in bed. But I answered the call and it was a video call, which, you know, okay, it's a video call. <laughs> I gotta just, you know, shake my head for a minute. <clears throat> and it's um, friends and relatives. It's three people that I don't speak to all the time, 
that were friends of my cousin, Vicky, my, my cousin that just passed my 91 year old dancing cousin. And they just called on a video call, I guess that Vicky had to talk about Vicky for some reason. And so I, I said, well, who made this call? Like who called, her? who made the call? And no one made the call, none of them. Um, it was someone from Bangor, someone from Chicago and myself and another number that I didn't recognize. And none of us, that person wasn't there, but the three of us knew that we didn't make the call. The call was made to us. So for me, this was another phone call from heaven. Wow. And right, Vicky's calling in and saying, listen, I want you to know I love you guys, love each other. That was it. What is it that we do that is most joyful when it's all said and done? We just are together. We hang out together. We love each other. In bodies or out of bodies, doesn't matter. In the ordinary of a simple phone call, heaven was calling and all of us recognized it. All of us said, oh, well, there it is. There's no veil between form and not form. We are in love. Love speaks. Love speaks through us, as us. And when that call comes, all I want to do is be alert and be ready to receive it. To receive love, the phone call from love is coming 24-7. And when we're simply present to the ordinary stuff, wherever we are, being simply present makes us profoundly open to receive the depths of who we are, that, that, that spaciousness of being. So those are my little stories for the day. I love you all. Thank you, Brother James. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Vicki. Aren't these stories great? That's the beauty of stories that help us to remember and they all start, I think, with something that you you mentioned here, Vicki, that one line, there must be a better way. That was the one statement that initiated this flow of light and love and energy that we now call A Course in Miracles. It was simply Bill Thetford saying those words to Helen Shuckman, there must be a better way. They were exasperated. There has to be something better than this. And Helen said, yes, and I'll help you find it. And they joined together in that. And that's what we're doing. We're joining together in that better way. The, the way that is better than the way that we've tried up until now. We've tried every way possible, usually a way to try and get what I think I want that I don't have, rather than to simply be with what is be with the is of this moment. That's the better way. That's what all the great masters and teachers tell us. Just be with what is without any condition, any judgment. Just be at rest with that. Pretty simple. And all these stories to teach us the same lesson. So to that we say, Amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.